Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. Today I'm going to fire up the BioCrude producing wood stove here, run the generator, produce gasoline. We're going to power up that propane powered refrigerator there on the left also at the same time. Let me go ahead and take you through some of this from the start here at the generator. So what we have here, once again, is we have our valve. We have our synthetic gas line running into just a, a black iron T into a valve here into our where the carburetor used to go on the old generator here. We don't have any fuel lines hooked up to the system. It's all empty. That tank is fully drained. As you can tell if I look inside of there, it's rusty on the bottom. This hasn't had liquid in it in a very long time. So there you go. That's how it's mounted to the generator. That's what we'll be running there. It comes out of there. Runs up into our uh, wood wine collector. This is actually using the catalyst effect of synthetic gas against copper. Uh, I had to go ahead and take this copper and burn it and then put it in some water and some earth and add a little electricity to it to create a really heavy green corrosion all the way across and inside and outside this copper. It's actually the green corrosion here, the copper oxides, that we're going to want to really uh, make the catalyst effect a lot stronger. So this will catch our wood wine, which we'll use later in another video to produce uh, methanol. So it comes up out of there into our first major condenser here. Uh, goes through another section of copper tubing. Now you got to make sure the copper is running out of downhill. Otherwise the wood wine will be produced the second the synthetic gas hits it and will roll backwards. It won't want to go through it unless it's on a downhill slope. So once again we're through the fractional distillation center here into our second catch there. In the background you see our very first catch. That's the heaviest of the bio crudes which we'll be running today. Uh, you can see a little pull off spot there at the bottom. Here's our bio crude feed into our thermal cracking unit inside of the wood stove. If I show you that inside of there, you can see it running through. Alright, so we have catalyst metals inside of our first reactor here, like aluminum oxide and others, uh, which are all powdered down to a powdered form. Uh, we also have another base of catalyst metals inside of our secondary catalyst reactor here. And these are dry catalysts where this will be a molten catalyst. The catalyst metals inside of this, I need to let it get it hot before I start feeding the crude oil into it. Uh, those will react with the crude oil and produce a lot more gasoline than a diesel and fuel oil product. Uh, so that'll go into our secondary catalyst. Uh, one form of fuel, a heavy grade, is going to drop down out of here, which I'm actually going to re-thermal crack through the wood stove to produce even more gasoline out of it back through another set of molten catalysts. So we have a dry catalyst here, and it's going to come out through the stainless and collect our first grade of fuel right here, which should be a, a mixture with a higher octane level, more like a gasoline. And then it's going to come out, the gas from that is going to come out mostly butanols and propanols at this stage because we've isolated off the heavier gases here and we're going to re-crack those. So we just wanted the gasolines, the propanes, and the butanols out of the top. This is now going to run those through another reactive agent here, copper tubing, on an uphill slope to make sure anything in it is going to run back downhill and then it's going to run into our propane powered refrigerator's burner down here. So here's what we've got for wood. Uh, I've got the bio crude production can, the synthetic gas production can here, the reactor, full of a mix of wood, of greasewood, juniper, and oak. Uh, a couple cow pies inside of there, nice and dry, just to add some more methane content to it. Uh, we have a bucket full of wood here that we're gonna actually going to use to fire up the wood stove itself. Uh, and that'll be uh, what gives us the heat for both the thermal cracking unit on the bio crude production system and on the thermal cracking that's taking place inside of our reactor here. So let me go ahead and set this all up and I'll show you what's going on once the fire's roaring. We'll stick that can inside of there, produce synthetic gas, and run the generator. So just give me a moment. Hi right, folks, it's a cold day out here in Arizona today. We're reaching about 36 degrees as our high today, so it's probably around 33, which is actually a good time to run this system because it's the cooling effect that's being applied on these pipes by the air temperature already out here today is going to really improve the process. The cooler we can get this whole system, the better it's going to work. So let me go ahead and show you how I load the stove. When we have this much mass, it's actually easier to feed it into the top opening than it is the lower opening. So I'm going to go ahead and just start throwing in material. Give me just a second to get that filled up. And you'll see just how much of this bucket I can actually fit in there. You'll be able to watch just how much fuel and how much energy is released by this stove for a small amount of wood. Alright, 
We're getting closer and closer here to getting this full. This is a necessary part of this stove. Uh, the production models actually have a 20 or 30 gallon or even a 50 gallon uh, reactor can like this that comes with it because this doesn't produce more than about 35 40 minutes a usable gas and that's five gallons now you can imagine what you can get out of 50 gallon can the much bigger stove than this is made out of higher grade metals this is just a prototype to show you how to do it all right so we filled our system up and we've used most of the five gallon bucket full of wood we're going to set that off to the side here. We're going to go ahead, stick in our bio crude reactor. What I have to do now is kind of push this down really hard, this lid, on top of this. See if we can get that on there nice and tight. The better the seal on this, the less gas it's going to leak. You don't want any oxygen getting in this oxygen can really destroy the effect. Well, that looks like we've got it on there pretty good. We're going to go ahead and set that. Let me go ahead and turn to the other side. Get a bit of shadow here. We're going to go ahead and set that all the way through the system. Just like so. Here in the back, I'm lining up the threads with a one inch pipe that come, goes into our bio crude fractional distillation system. All right, so it's locked in there. We're gonna go ahead and shut that door down. I'm gonna fire up the stove and once it gets going, I'm gonna turn back on the camera and show you how it's working. Hi folks, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and light up the stove. I'm gonna walk you up close to the stove with the camera let you listen to the sound it's making. It sounds a lot like a rocket stove. I've got a really healthy wind draw through this with some air inputs here into the flame. And I'll let you listen out here in a minute. What we have here is a jar full of bio crude, which I'll bring the camera up close so you can see just how sludgy it is. It's really thick with a little bit of thin liquid on top. Uh, let's go ahead and light this up. There we go. As long as that paper stays lit, this should light up in just a brief moment. All right, so you can probably start seeing some of the flames building inside of the stove. Unlike a conventional wood stove, where you light your wood mass at the bottom, on a gasifier stove, you want to light that wood mass at the top. It actually burns from the top down, which is op opposite than the standard wood stoves that we're used to. All right, so our flames are getting going here. I'm gonna go ahead and just let that build for just a brief moment here on camera so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna grab the camera, bring you up close, and let you look at the flames and the sound that it's making as the stove is running. I'm also gonna show you the bio crude a little closer here. All right, so here we are looking inside the wood stove just after ignition here. It's starting to fire up. It's starting to heat up our bio crude thermal cracking unit and our bio crude reactor up top production system. Uh, here's the jar of the bio crude that we're going to be putting through the system. If you can see down then there is a liquidy portion and at the very bottom there's a very heavy thick sludge. We're going to go ahead and throw both of these through the system combined. Uh, both have a, well the bottom stuff is more of a paraffin, extremely long chain carbons. Uh, so we have to throw those through and break those probably twice, which is the bottom part of our catalyst separation system. Now this liquidy portion here that you see, that will actually probably give us the most of our gasoline production today. We're not going to run a lot through, just enough to try to use up some of that catalyst metals I have in there. And I'm going to show you the gasoline that we produce at the end. So let's go ahead and just let this stove fully get up to temperature here. Uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is all the way down the line here, you're going to want to leave this valve open. That way the synthetic gas from the production can in there can actually go out until it's a good lightable gas. You'll be able to check this with your lighter, come in, hit it, and once it lights really easily, go ahead and then start up your generator. So give me a moment, let the stove warm up, and I'll show you the whole system in action. All right, now that I've got the bio crude poured in, let's take a look at the output for that bio crude reactor. Uh, I've got some wind today that's going to make this almost impossible to light. But if you notice there, 
We actually have some smokes coming out. Uh, that's going to be good usable gases right now. It's kind of uh, just being tugged around everywhere by the wind. It should be coming out the top there as you can see now. Right there. So let's go ahead and give it a test here and see if we can't light that gas. If the wind... Alright, if you look really closely here, you can actually see the fumes rising out of that tube at the end of our burner. That's the fine fumes, that's all you're going to really see. Most of the pu uh, propanes and butanols are actually invisible, uh, especially if they're a catalyst outright and everything's filtered correctly. But if you look, you can really carefully see those fumes coming up out of there, blowing into the sunlight here in front of the camera. That's a uh, pretty good uh, refinement right there when you're not seeing a lot, especially for the heavy crude that I've put into the system here. Uh, most of this should be invisible. We're going to go ahead and try to light this up here in a minute. And it's pretty windy today. Hopefully that'll work for us. Uh, right now I want to take you through into the condensation jar here. You can actually see the liquids inside of their building. They're the clear liquid, not the... Uh, the darker colored stuff, that's a bio crude uh, jar that I use, so it's still stained with some bio crude in it. But you'll notice here right now that there is a great amount of condensation happening inside of our jar of our gasoline style fuel. It's nice and fogged out inside of there. And with as much as you see coming out the end here, means we're gaining most of what's in there. That's uh, got quite a bit inside the jar and almost nothing making it out. At least nothing that's visible, which is a good sign. Uh, let me walk you over real quickly here. We should have synthetic gas production happening uh, from our generator spout here. Also very hard to see today because of the wind. But that's actually working right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set the camera down and try to fire this all up. Well, if I can keep the wind working with me here for a moment, I'm going to try to see if I can show you the gas coming out of this lighting. Oh, you heard it pop there. And in fact, there is a little blue flame coming out of there right now. Very difficult to see the flame. Let me put it out. All right, now we'll get smoke again. Let's see if I can show you the light here. You would hear it go back down into the jar. And right now we have a little blue flame rolling out of the top of this from our propane and butanols. It's difficult to see that flame. Let me see if I can give you some indicator that there's actually a fire going there. Hey, maybe you can see that starting to crisp the top of that wood. And there it goes. It's lighting it on fire. So there you go, there's actually almost a perfectly dead clear burnable gas coming out the end of this. As you can tell by lighting this piece of wood on fire. It's almost completely invisible. Let me go ahead once again and put it out. Okay, our fire is beginning to die down inside the wood stove. And you'll notice here that it's starting to clear up. You can actually see down into the jar. You'll see the uh, condensated fuel down the edges of the jar here still precipitating down the side we're gonna go ahead and take a second and let that fully cool and I'm gonna open up the jar for you and show you the fuel we've created all right here we are at the end of our project let's take a look inside the stove you can see in there just the very last of our flames are rolling you can keep this going longer than this and produce more fuels uh, we've ran this now for two full stove loads to completely isolate all the bio crude I put through the system. Let's go ahead now and see if we've produced any fuel inside of our condensation jar here, our condenser. This is a little difficult to get out from underneath here. Okay. Next step here, let's slide that out of the way. And let's remove our jar. All right, and you can see there what's inside the jar is this piece of pipe here. Now it smells like fuel, that's a good sign. So let's take something here, a 
piece of stick. Well, first of all, let me show you what it looks like inside of there. Hopefully you can see there. Now some of the black you see in the bottom was just some leftover bio crude in the jar that's now been stripped off the sides by the fuel condensing. You'll see a couple layers of fuel inside of there. Uh, one a little bit darker than the other, one floating on top of the other, and then a third one at the very bottom. The middle layer that you're seeing in there is diesel. Uh, the top layer I'm presuming is the gasoline layer since it burns the, the best here. So let me go ahead and show you what we've got going on in here. We'll grab a stick here. Hopefully you can see this. Let's get some of that on there. We've got a lighter sitting here. Let's see if it lights. Let's keep that away from the jar, obviously, just to be safe. Maybe you can see this. Here we go. Oh, wow, look at that. Now that's a high grade of fuel. Let's see how long it burns. Well, it disappears very, very fast. So I'm presuming we're achieving a very high oct octane level. Excuse me. Uh, this is a uh, Obviously, going to be very usable for combustion engine. Oh yeah, look at that. Hopefully you can see that. The wind's blowing it. It's got a bit of sooting coming off of it, so it still could be refined quite a bit. You notice how quickly that burns? It doesn't even light the piece of wood on fire. Let's do one more test. There we go. So there you go. There's how to thermally crack bio crude oil into a usable form of fuel using a liquid catalyst and a dry powdered catalyst system. Obviously a very high octane fuel, something you can use in any combustion engine. Uh, there's also diesel in the bottom of this and that's something I'm going to have to find a way to extract out of this and show you how. Uh, in the plant we've been able to do this in a multi-stage uh, distillation system that reruns it back through uh, through new catalysts and a catalyst recharge system that bakes the coke ash off of our catalyst inside of the system which produces a lot more fuel. I don't have much longer than I can probably use those liquid catalysts inside of there or molten catalysts and uh, without scrubbing the coke ash which is a high carbon deposit left over when you're thermal cracking with a, a catalyst material. Let me go ahead one last time here light some of this up. There you go. There's our bio gasoline. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, this is Mr. Teslonian and the Teslonian Man Show.